welcome back to my channel. It's Christina with Repray Disney. Here on this channel, we like to talk all things Disney, from packing to planning to pins to books. I probably should change my channel name to Read Pin Disney, huh? <laughs> but uh, either way, oh, my dog's just walking around here right now. Okay, so we have our second installment of Ridley Pearson's Kingdom Keepers Disney After Dark. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the story has progressed. And some of those dots from the previous video, and side note, if you have not seen the previous video, video, you need to go back because you're going to be a little lost in the sauce. But some of the dots are starting to connect. Um, but I just, ah, it's still, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. All right. So here's the thing. Ridley, um, not Ridley, I don't want to say that. He's our author. So I think one thing that I didn't necessarily make clear last video is about this whole DHI situation, right? So these characters, there's these five kids and they're like eighth graders, um, which I don't know why would you choose eighth graders to do, why would you choose kids to do this in general? Why would you choose kids to be, to do this job for Disney? I'm not sure. But uh, anyway. So there's these five eighth graders and they're seemingly randomly selected. Um, and these kids, they, what the DHI program is, is at Disney, these are Disney inter hologram, holographic interactive people. So they're tour guides for the park. So what happens is the kids go in, um, Disney did some kind of scanning of their, of the kid copying and scanning. So essentially they did a copy paste right? And they made the paste, the copy per kid, um, an interactive hologram in the park. So it can talk. It can, for the most part, think. Um, it can do those things, right? And then the kids are still le leading normal lives, everyday lives, whatever. Um, but there's just, they're just, their copy of themselves are in the, as tour guard, tour guides in the park. So problem that's happening is that uh, so when the kids go to sleep at night, they're, and we don't know what it is yet. Like they haven't named the thing. Is it their essence? Is it their consciousness? Is it their soul? We don't, they haven't named what it is. The only thing we know is that when the kids go to sleep at night, they are transported into the parks. So, but it's their DHI, but their DHI is partly human partly integraph or a uh, holograph hologram hologram yeah so the kids can do things like they can so when they're in, in their hologram form okay um because they have to be where the cameras are and where the camera is located so there's not that many dead spots in the parks there's a few dead spots which we'll talk about um, but there's not that many dead spots in the park, but, um, the kids, if they, if they're in the park, they can get hurt. They, they, when they're in their hologram form, sleeping hologram form, they can get hurt physically. Like it happens to their body too, but they can also, if they believe enough, yes, I said believe as in magical, <laughs> but if they believe enough, they can make themselves light where they can go through things like go through walls and go through boat rides and <sighs> yeah I'm having a hard time with this one <laughs> so all right so remember the stonecutter's quill Walt Disney when he built the park um he knew that because of all this belief magic that happens um when people believe things believe in stories and believe in uh, well, stories that it breathes life into them. And so Walt Disney, according to this book, ha knew all along that something like this could happen, that these characters, like you have, what is this, Maleficent, like Maleficent and all the characters, all the animatronics, if, you, if enough people believed, these things come to life at dark. So when the park closes and it's dark, these things, these, these, everything comes to life in the park. 
Um, and so they're called overtakers because, the, or at least the, the naughty ones, they're called overtakers because they're trying to overtake the park. They're trying to over, not only the park, but the world. And so Disney, Walt built in a riddle and it's called the Stonecutter's Quill. It, it, a riddle that has to be solved in order to, so they can know what they need to do in order to defeat these overtakers. And I'm like, this is a huge premise that I feel like it just doesn't flow well for me. Um, because one of first, if the Disney villains can come alive, then the good ones, the heroes can be alive. And they are like they run into um, I want to say they ran into Winnie the Pooh. They ran into a couple of the characters. But if you can run into the villains, you can run into the heroes. So why is it up to the kids to save the parks when you have heroes? That is what they did. But it doesn't bring that up, you know? And then on top of that, why are they kids with such a huge mission? And if I'm walking around a Disney park, why do I want a tour guide that's a kid? You know, I don't want a kid tour guide. You know, there's all of these things that maybe it gets better, but I don't know. So story. Let's get to plot, right? So what happened was um, the last time we left off, I told you guys that the kids were going to meet up. So there, remember there's five kids and these kids were going, and Finn is their group leader because Wayne, which is an old guy, an old Imagineer who actually literally lives in the park. Um, he lives in, he lives in, above the fire station in the park. Um, so Wayne told Finn that he is the one, you know, <laughs> that he is the leader of this group and um, he's supposed to guide the group into doing these things, um, finding these clues. So all throughout the park, there's supposed to be these clues and the kids, they meet up at the park. Um, they meet up, they, let's try to make this short. So the kids meet up um, through like this video game thing. They chat in real life through this chat, through this video game. Um, but then they meet up in the parks. And so they meet up with Wayne, who, again, he tell, he walks them through, um, you know, the fact that they have to find clues and it has to be them to do it. They, he can't do it because he is not a DHI. He is a human. Um, so he knows things are going on. Like things get moved. Things um, like the pirates that attacked Finn and Philby, which is one of the, the five kids. Um, one of the, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride literally attacked them with a Buzz Lightyear <laughs> um, car from the Buzz Lightyear ride over in Tomorrowland. So like they're pulling things around, they're doing things. Um, so anyway, Wayne tells all the kids like, hey guys, you know, you guys have to be the ones to find these clues. And so he kind of, he leads them a little bit down the path of what these clues are. Um, so yeah, he says they can track things. Um, they can they can touch things as DHIs, like they can materialize, I guess, to touch things as DHIs because they believe. Um, he also leads them to, uh, okay, that was the other thing. Wayne leads them up to the Cinderella apartment, to the uh, that royal apartment that's up above um, Cinderella's royal table. And uh, the kids are like, oh wow. But how to get there, and this is something that was of note in the beginning, that some, the author did take some liberties. Like there, there was this huge maze type, not huge, but like this maze type thing. And anyway, in order to get to the secret apartment. So here's, a, here's I think it's going to be important later, but I don't know. Um, there is a button. So when the kids are sleeping, their physical form is sleeping safe at home in their beds. Um, their DHIs can be essentially, they can, they can push a button and it will send them back to their body. And it's just one button for everybody. I got a problem with that, but anyway. So Wayne tells them about the button and he tells them that we're gonna leave it here in the Cinderella's apartment. So it will be the um, their emergency emergency escape, escape thing, right? Um, anyway, so Walt tells, Walt is the one who left the clues and Wayne, to Wayne, and not the clues, but he left part of the riddle to Wayne and then Wayne is now giving it to the kids. And so part of that riddle is that they have to look for like a sun and a moon. Oh, here we go. It says, the 
Wayne said, the things in the story you need to focus on are the sun, the cloud, the wind, and the stone. Um, because Walt tells a story of, um, Walt told Wayne the story. Oh gosh, hold on. The stone cutter, the fable of the stone cutter. So y'all remember the, I don't know if you remember or not. I remember teaching this to my kids because we did mythology and such. But the fable of the stone cutter is essentially there's a stone cutter who, um, he's cutting stones and the sun is like beating down on him and he feels defeated or whatever. And so he makes a wish. He wish he could be the sun and nothing would ever, you know, essentially nothing is greater than the sun, and, you know, all that. So he becomes the sun. So then the clouds come by and they block out the sun. He's like, ha, huh, no, I'd rather be the clouds because the clouds can beat the sun. There's nothing greater than the clouds. And so then he becomes a cloud. And then the wind pushes the clouds away. He's like, no, I'd rather be the wind because the wind, nothing defeats the wind, you know. Um, and then he, become, uh, he becomes the wind. And then the wind gets blocked by a mountain. And he's like, I'd rather be the stone, which, you know, circles back to, the... anyway. So he's told this fable. Uh, Disney told Wayne this fable. And Wayne has now translated to the kids. And he said, kids, you guys need to focus on the four things, the sun, the wind, or the sun, the cloud, the wind, and the stone. And so the kids are like, what the heck? And I would be too, right, too, so. So they they go off and they try to figure these things out. Okay, so they're in the parks and a thing, while they're on this task of trying to figure things out, they realize Wayne told them that there is one, like two places, but one particular place that they um, are essentially invisible because there's no cameras. And those are the teepees on um, Tom Sawyer's Island. So I've, I've never been on Tom Sawyer's Island, so I can't say what they look like, but they're evidently their teepees there. And within the teepees, when they go inside, they are invisible because there is no camera to project their hologram. So they can still hear, they can still talk to each other, um, but they're invisible to other things in the park. And so those other things are Maleficent. She finds them because she, how she sniffs them out or, or roots them out. I have no idea because that wasn't explained to us. Um, but Maleficent is evidently knows that the kids are there. And um, so she tries to, you know, she tries to find them, but she can't really find them. She knows that they're there. So she's just kind of like yelling at them or talking to them. You know, I know you're here and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, the kids get freaked out. She ends up going off. They come out. Um, so they decide to meet up in the real world. And when they meet up in the real world, here's the thing. Remember that girl, Amanda, that I was telling you about? Amanda um, is, is still sus. She is the friend of, she's Finn's friend. But now we got this new girl named Jez. I think it stands for Jezebel. But it's J-E-Z, Jez. And Jez is really like, she lays it on thick, you know? She's like, hey, um, when she's talking to Finn and she's just really, she's really odd. So they all go, she invites like Finn to like her cheerleading car, or is it cheerleading or Girl Scouts? I think it's cheerleading. I don't remember. But to this car wash fundraiser that they're having. And then y'all, I really wrote in, in, in my book here, I annotated they have this whole scene where these girls are washing cars in their little swimsuits. Dude, that was 100% not necessary. Like it wasn't provocative, but it was just odd. Like you didn't need to describe to me that the girl took off her shirt and she had this two-piece swimsuit on and they 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 had a whole um, sudsy, uh, soapy water fight thing like hmm? that raised an eyebrow really quick um, because there was nothing relevant in that scene there was absolutely nothing relevant anything that happened any dialogue that happened after that had nothing to do with the whole car wash scene of them washing cars and fighting in the water like had nothing to do with anything so Ridley Pearson I I'm gonna need you to take that out that wasn't necessary and kind of you sus Okay. Um, so anyway, Jazz is there and then she starts, she's, uh, Finn, before she can talk to Finn, she starts literally rubbing up on Maybeck. Like she's grabbing his arm and she's like, ha ha ha, 
flirting here, drink this. Like she's doing all this stuff. And she's really suspicious because she's handing him this drink and he's, he, he's like, he doesn't want to drink. And then she's like, no, drink it. And she, he drinks it. And Finn is just watching all this. And you're like, dude, say something, do something, whatever. But then they kind of, Amanda's there and they kind of look over to the, to the side and there's this black car and it's Maleficent. Like she's in, she's has this whole bunch of makeup on. She's wearing gloves and she calls Jez over and they get into like a little tiff or spat or whatever. And then essentially the car peels off. And so, but before Finn was able to get a good look and see like, mm, no one should be wearing that much makeup and gloves in this Florida sun. Who would do that? Yeah, somebody who's trying to cover something. Who would need to cover something? Maleficent. Anyway, so here's the thing. Well, okay. They ended up getting back to the parks and um, before I get into my thoughts. So they get back to the parks and they kind of find out. So there are, <laughs> y'all, for those people who do not like Small World, props to you. Because I like Small World. After reading this, I don't think I can watch Ride Small World ever again. So I told y'all things come to life, right? So they figured out that Small World has the largest sun in the park. So I guess towards the end of the Small World, there's this huge golden sun. And so they figure out that Small World has the sun. And so they go at night and go in to the, to the Small World ride and it's all dark and creepy. And then all of a sudden, all them little Small World dolls come to life and they attack. Like they're swimming and attacking and biting and it's a whole mess. Yeah. So anyway, um, that happens. Um, you know, they figure out, okay, no, there's something that we're missing because they didn't see anything at first. Come to find out, Finn figures it out. Like we need 3D glasses because something Amanda says about perspective and Walt had said something about putting things in perspective. And so Finn kind of, that kind of jogs his thought of like, hmm, well, maybe we need something, how to see it differently. So let's take 3D glasses. So they took 3D glasses, come to find out in small world, like there is in the sun, there's like these letters that they find. And then they also, they said the ride that has the most clouds is uh, Splash Mountain. And so they get on, like they split up into two groups and then Finn and Philby go up to Splash Mountain. They And they literally swim in Splash Mountain. Like they, they are where the boats aren't going, the logs. So they're floating through imagine floating in splash mountain on your back while looking at all the stuff that's going on creepy anyway but they do it um and then like um, there's like evidently there's a pink cloud because splash mountain is also one that i have never ridden i've seen video rides of but i've never actually rode it myself because i don't like water rides but so the they find the clues up there and then they do all of that. They come back together, but come to find out Maybeck is no longer with them. Maybeck is gone. Well, evidently Maybeck was supposedly had a date with Jez at the carousel. Um, but he got take, he's, he's been taken. They leave. <laughs> it seems like every story I read, they need Liam Neeson because <laughs> somebody's gotten taken. So he's been taken y'all. Okay. And so anyway, his, and so if you're wondering what happens to their real body, nothing happens. They just stay asleep. They can't, you can't wake a person up. So Maybeck is in this weird state right now. Okay. That's everything for the most part. Pick it up if you want to. Here's my thoughts about this. Other than some creepy stuff, like I feel like there is no depth to any of these characters. There is no, there's no complexity to any of these characters. They're, they're just going through the motions. And again, like there's holes. Like I don't understand why, I don't feel as though like, there's conversations that happen that kind of lead to nowhere. There are scenes that happen that lead to nothing, unless it's going to happen later, which it hasn't so far. And I'm on chapter 26 or 25. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just 
wondering like, okay, is it gonna pick up pace? You know, are we gonna get some, well, why is this really happening? Like we, so far, like I said, this is how, this is how far, well, let me go, I guess, I don't even know how this goes, but this is how far we got. This is all that we have left, right? Not enough story. Um, I just, I, I'm not a fan of his writing style. I'm not a fan of his character development. I'm not a fan of the fact that there are a few holes. Now, I don't know, because this is the first Ridley Pearson book I've ever read. And so I don't know if it's just because it's a middle grade book that it feels dumbed down. And, and please take that in the best way possible, because I, I'm not trying to say that like middle grade kids are dummies. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, it just feels as though there's a lot that's been left out. That's a better way of saying that. And um, story, there's a lot of elements that could have, there's more connections that need to be made. And it hasn't, it doesn't do that. Um, and then, like I said, there's those creepy piece, pieces. Now, I, I did make a comment last I'm gonna say last class, last video about Maybeck and that it was kind of offensive how he was speaking. I will say that that has not happened since. It happened then, which again, then why say that? Why have him say what we do? You know, um, there was one other thing that was slightly offensive. Um, it was that Maybeck and um, Finn were having this conversation and Finn Maybeck was just questioning something, but Finn tells Maybeck, like Maybeck was having his feelings and they were valid feelings, but Finn tells him, you need to cut the attitude. And Maybeck's like, Maybeck's like, what attitude? You know, he's like, your attitude is, I just felt like, why does Maybeck have to have the attitude? Because in a few chapters later, Finn was essentially acting the same way with Philby, but Philby, who is another group of the boy in this, they say, like, here's Philby. This will be Finn, Philby, that's Maybeck, um, and then Charlene and the other girl. Anyway, but I just, I don't, I, just, I don't find it right. I just, I don't know. It just didn't sit right with me, but Anywho, do what you wish with the book. Do what you wish. Uh, we only have a little bit left, so we'll see how it ends. But like I said, I as it is now, I don't think I'll... I'm interested in the story. I just don't like who... I don't like the writing style of this. Um, if they made this into a like a movie or something, I'd absolutely watch it. But uh, anyway, <sighs> that's what I got for now. So thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate, let, appreciate it. Let me know comments below what you think um if you've read any other Ridley Pearson books and you recommend something else by him I'm willing to take a shot um because I don't think this was his debut book but eh, eh. so <laughs> as always have a magically blessed day and know I'll be praying for you bye guys